weeks of lovely sunny weather in Sweden and the day that I want to test active track and it's bloody windy. But maybe a perfect opportunity to test the limits of APAS and active track 3.0. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and I've got with me the Mavic Air 2. And today I'm going to be testing APAS and Active Track 3.0. And over here to my right, I've got a gigantic forest. Now, the only challenge today, certainly for APAS, is going to be the wind. And of course, APAS uses the sensors on the drone all around it to automatically change its direction and fly around objects when it's engaged in Active Track and in manual flight. And we're going to be testing that today. But one thing it won't be able to account for are the moving branches because of the wind. But we're going to give it a try. We're going to get the drone up in the air and show the onboard footage. If you enjoy this content, click that subscribe button below. And of course, comment below at any time throughout the video. Let's see how well it does. Super windy, but let's see how this goes. So here we go, initializing it. Props going and take off. <laughs> now already it's quite clear just how windy it is. You can see it's bouncing all over the place here. It is not a perfect day for testing this, but it's certainly gonna be a good experiment to see how capable it is of following us, even in conditions like this. So let's see how it gets on. So the first thing we're gonna do is put me in shots. So I'm going to tilt the gimbal down a little bit. And I'm going to draw a box around myself, which initiates active track. Very, very easy. I can now choose different modes as well. So I can choose active track, I can choose trace or parallel. I've got rotate, which will just keep rotating around me. But I'm going to put it on trace at the moment. So there we go, it's now in that mode. And APAS is enabled as well. So let's see how it gets on when I start walking. And remember, the drone should automatically avoid things in this mode. And it's following me at the moment. Now, this will be interesting because in here, we have some rather low branches. So this will be quite an interesting challenge, but let's see if the drone is following us. It's doing very well in this wind. Now, hopefully it'll dip down because there's branches in front. Should see it dip down in a minute, hopefully. And yeah, it's descended in altitude and it's still following me through, which is really impressive. <laughs> now the next challenge is gonna be this, because it's quite narrow, but let's see what happens. So I'm gonna go through. Drone is still following me nicely. It's hesitating. It's ducking down, it's going to the left and the right, and it's gone through, that's just incredible. So I've got this whole forest here, so let's just go. I'm just gonna be a bit more confident here and just go for it and see what it does. It's just handling this so well. Whilst it's doing this, I can make it ascend and descend. Oh, now it nearly skimmed a tree then. Now that's the problem with it not having side sensors there. I raised its altitude and it literally clipped a tree, which is a bit of a worry. But it's doing really well. Now, let's see if we can get something a bit more challenging. Let's go over here. So, going around, it's following me very, very well. The wind has dropped right down in here as well, which is good. But it's so far doing a great job of keeping track of me. But as I say, the lack of side sensors really showed the issue there by the fact that it clipped that tree as it was moving to the side. Now the FOV of those front obstacle avoidance sensors is pretty wide, I believe. So it can see things to the left and right when they're slightly in front, but not. Oh, that was a lovely maneuver then, how it just missed those trees. Very impressive. This is hard work juggling this SLR <laughs> as well. But this is gonna be interesting. So if you watch how, if I go up here, Let's see how it moves. Oh, that's really impressive. 
lots of trees here. How's it going to get its way through there? Wow. I mean, that's so agile. Oh, it had to break then to avoid hitting that tree. Um, it's hesitating now. So as I move forward, let's see what it's going to do. Yeah, it's gone around it. That's very neat. And it's getting very wooded here, but it's doing a great job. Absolutely brilliant. Right, let's see what happens if I run out through here. <laughs> and it avoided all the branches just beautifully. That is so impressive. Now I've tried this before with the Mavic 2 Pro and that active track just was nowhere near that capable. And I mean literally nowhere near that capable. As soon as it got to the first challenge, it pretty much quit. It gave up. <laughs> so I'm really, really shocked at that. Now let's descend the altitude a little bit, which I can do whilst it's in active track. So I'm going to go up the forest route here. And this looks perfect. Right now, this is going to be very challenging. So you can see it following me there. And it's coming through the forest very carefully. Here's a nice bit that's going to be a, a dip down moment. Watch how the drone is going to get through here. Oh, it's not sure what to do. And it's moving to the right and it's going up a little bit. Look at that, effortless. Now, okay, this isn't a Skydio. <laughs> it doesn't have 12 obstacle avoidance sensors, but still it's incredibly impressive. Now, let's see if it can work its way through this very narrow gap. Let's see what it does. This will be very interesting. It's thinking about it. It's descending, it's going to the left or right. It's very close to that tree and it's not sure what to do. Is it gonna follow me? Oh, it's going to the left or right. It's trying to find a way around. And I don't, it's, it's dropping down in altitude. It's getting desperate now because I'm getting further away from it. So it's desperate not to lose me. And it really is trying, but it just can't quite get through that gap. Let's see, no, it's actually lost. Oh, it's reacquired, no, it's lost me again. It has got me, it's trying to descend down lower. Oh, oh wow, it re it's really trying. You can see it and I'm not controlling it. Absolutely nothing on the controls. It's doing all of this by itself. So if, if I take a different route through, then it should be able to follow me through, hopefully. No, again, it can't get through there. It's not quite brave enough. It really is trying its best, but it seems to be stuck. So I'm gonna just manually see if I can pilot it through a little bit. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that's interesting. So I gave it some manual input there to just try and edge it through that gap and it went a bit crazy. See if I descend it down a little bit. Will it now go forwards? I'm giving it some forward input, but it's really resisting. It doesn't want to go through. It's descending down by itself and it's through. Okay, so I gave it some manual input there, coaxing it through. And eventually it did come through, but it did not want to go through there in the slightest. <laughs> this is really impressive. So I'm going to go around. It's going around that tree. Look at these twigs. I mean, normally the twigs are death. That's, that's the, the dooming point for a drone, but it just went through effortlessly. That's really, really cool. <laughs> and I, just, I'm just really impressed. Look at the colors on that screen as well. Really, really nice. I think we'll do one last challenge. We'll run through here. So let's go a bit quicker this time. It's hard running with an SLR and a drone following me. It had a lot of hesitation there. It makes some incredibly violent noises as it's doing all of this avoiding. Oh, now it nearly hit some twigs there. <laughs> it's very hard to just trust the drone when it's on active track because you're just waiting to hear a bang at all times. And I've chosen this area specifically because there's nobody in this forest today. So it's perfect. Now this is getting very narrow here, as you can see. I think when you've used it a few times, you can probably just trust it 
and leave it to do its job. <laughs> now this is very narrow, lots of little branches here, but it's doing well. Right, let's give it a bit of a trust and pick up the pace. So I'm really, really running now and it's doing incredibly well. You notice I'm ascending and descending as well. And it's catering for that with ease. <laughs> there it is behind me. I'm just going to put the transmitter down and get a shot of that beautiful drone. Now, whilst I dislike the app, whilst I dislike that transmitter, I cannot fault that active track performance because that is just incredible, especially in this wind. You maybe can't really get a sense of the wind, but here's a shot of the trees just to show you how crazy it is. To be able to track me that well in that wind, Active Track has come a long way, and I just hope they bring the Mavic 2 Active Track up to par because that is exceptional. So there's APAS and ActiveTrack 3.0. I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did testing it in the current conditions. This drone has firmware updates all the time and so we can only expect this to get better and hopefully that includes the app, which right now is highly limited. But DJI have a solid track record of rapid firmware updates and app evolution, so watch this space. Anyway, comment below, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down because you can and click that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.